Lou. This is a highlight of uh, of my uh, broadcast weekend. Um, they're on every weekend at Pro Talking Fantasy Sports. Of course, the segment of Fantasy Sports brought to you by the uh, good people of WebFriends.com. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up, Shank. Did you get your sweetheart, um, your Valentine's something? I'm working on it. Okay, good. Um, um, of course, <laughs> Puzz, Puzz has several, so he's, 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 it's one continuous buy for him. Um, but when you're out there, don't forget about um, the good people of WebFriends.com. It's not too late to take out a free profile at WebFriends.com and meet somebody to hang out with. And who knows, maybe even share Valentine's Day or that following weekend with them. And, uh, of course, WebFriends.com for people who click. I like that. Um, Benson is joining us right now here. And, of course, you can check them out at FantasyFootballSideline.com or FantasyBaseballDugout.com. Or you can go to SpadoraOnSports.com and check out their blog and also check out Wager Web. Okay, guys, where do you want to go? Do you want to talk a little bit about Super Bowl teams, anything like an all-star team for the Super Bowl? Well, you know, this uh, this week on uh, on FantasyFootballSideline.com, our – our feature, our hottest blog, our, our top blog post of the week, as uh, even though the the hottest wives contest is entering the final seven days, so oh. Puzz needs to get on there and continue to stuff the ballot box for his votes. Um, <laughs> the the hottest post, the hottest activity on our site this week is actually geared towards our all time, all Super Bowl fantasy football team. So uh, I think I'm, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to run down the list uh, yeah. and, and name the players. Does that makes sense that to you. Good. No, that's great. Okay. No, that's great. I want you to do that before. But before you do that, I know. I know uh, Julie's getting our vote so far, so we're stuffing it with Julie right now. <laughs> well, Julie needs a few more votes because uh, uh, Lori Schaub has got a, a big push here in the last week or so and has passed Julie. It's a, a 24.1 to 21.4 percent of the vote right now. So okay. uh, you, your listeners have to go on to fantasyfootballsideline.com and, and vote for Julie. Yeah, and if you fans go on to fantasyfootball.com, but are sports fans, uh, we want you to vote for Julie. And um, of course, of course, if, if Julie wins, Bob, uh, we're going to have some type of premium item that Julie could donate to the show or something like that that we can do like a register to win on, right? For those fans who who vote for Julie. Oh, of course. Okay, well that's what the way we do with things here. Okay, sorry, sorry, John, I didn't mean to um, knock you out of it, but I want to get that out. Yeah, let's, that is important. Let's stuff. get let's. Get, Let's get back to actual meaningful conversation about fantasy football. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm here. So, so anyway, with uh, getting back to get, again, this is ah, the team. The the team that we're the team that. And it's like take us to the laundry Super Bowl too next. Go ahead, John. Here we go. We're we'll here. <laughs> The uh, the my the, this is uh, this is a, a, an accumulation of the greatest individual statistical performances in Super Bowl history. Uh, at quarterback Steve Young from uh, Super Bowl 29, I think a lot of us remember that against yeah. the Chargers. It was the only time he was in the Super Bowl, but he made it. Uh, he made it legendary. 325 passing yards, 49 rushing yards, and the one statistic every fantasy football fan loves: six touchdowns. He put up six touchdowns on the Chargers in Super Bowl 29. Uh, As you go through running back performances, two that really stand out to me would be Roger Craig from Super Bowl 19. He put up 135 total yards and three scores against Miami. And uh, Terrell Davis uh, in Super Bowl 32 put up 165 total yards and three scores against the Green Bay Packers. At wide receiver, you got three wide receivers, and two of them are Patriots. Uh, both of them actually will be playing uh, in the Super Bowl this weekend or uh, this uh, upcoming weekend against the Giants. You got Jerry Rice, who, I mean, how does Jerry Rice not make an all time NFL list for anything? But his best Super Bowl uh, fantasy performance actually came in Super Bowl 24, uh, where he had 10 catches for 149 yards and three scores. Um, okay. Dion, can, I, can, I, can I just stop you right there? Because I'm going to take a time yeah. out pick up some commercials. We'll bring you right back. One person you didn't mention, which we can talk about when you come back, was Kurt Warner going from bag boy, grocery bag boy, to Super Bowl MVP in 18 months. I think that's a choice or two on that um, all-time roster, too. We'll be right back talking about the benches, fantasy baseball, hot stove, fantasy football, lingerie football, and whatever else is on our minds. We're coming right back at you here. Here is the Spadoran Sports. Sorry, John. I had to cut you off. No man, no. You gotta, you gotta pay the bills, Pete. I get yeah, it. But you know what, John? Come on there right now. Stuff in her. She's not bad looking. But uh, but yeah, he got yeah. engaged this week too. In fantasy sports, of course, we're rolling through the all-time all Super Bowl fantasy team. Of course, where we were, we were with Rice, weren't we? 
Yeah, we were at Jerry Rice, and, and I think as I mentioned before the break, it's kind of hard to have any type of all-time NFL list without having Jerry Rice included. Uh, but we have two two Patriots also on the list who have had pretty great performances in Super Bowls that are going to be playing uh, this next Sunday against the Giants. Uh, you got Deion Branch from Super Bowl 38. Uh, where he had 10 catches and a touchdown against Carolina. And Wes Welker, uh, in the uh, Super Bowl against the Giants uh, five years ago, had 11 catches for 103 yards. He actually tied the all-time record for catches in a Super Bowl uh, in spite of the losing effort. So uh, running down through the rest of the list here, at tight end you have Dan Ross from the Cincinnati Bengals. He scored two touches against San Francisco in Super Bowl 16. Uh, Ray Worshing uh, at kicker. Guy kicked four field goals against Cincinnati that year. And uh, then on the defense and special teams end, from Super Bowl VI, the Dallas Cowboys, it was a 39-degree Sunday in New Orleans, and they only gave up three points to the Miami Dolphins that year. So uh, that's your, that's your all-Super uh, Bowl, all-fantasy team. You, wanna, you want a little bit more insight into the team, we have the, the post up at fantasyfootballsideline.com. Please go check it out. Fantastic. Okay, Bob, where are you at with the uh, baseball sleepers for fantasy? Well, as we do every week, we try and cover a different position and give you sleepers, guys that have a nice return on investment anticipated for the 2012 season. And this week, we're looking at second baseman. Now, when it comes to second baseman, uh, position scarcity is a big thing because there aren't a lot of great second basemen out there. There's only so many Ian Kinslers, Chase Utley's, and Robbie Cano's. Uh, but some guys that we're really looking at uh, for 2012, the first guy you wouldn't expect to be on the list because he's a veteran, he's well-known, uh, but he's certainly not uh, thought of as a second baseman, and that's Michael Kadire. He's going to be moving from Minnesota to Colorado this year, and, of course, anytime you move to Coors Field, that's going to help your power numbers. But he actually played 17 games last year for the Twins at second base. I doubt he's going to play any second base this year in Colorado, uh, but he could go back to his 32 home run season that he had in 2009 playing at Coors Field. So those are the kind of things you want to look at and check your rules and see how many games you need to qualify because what you're getting in Kadire is outfield power and ability at a position like second base where you normally don't have those kind of big numbers. Uh, the second guy we really like is the Cleveland Indians second baseman, Jason Kipnis. Uh, he had a couple of injuries last year in his rookie season. He's probably the most talked about uh, second baseman in terms of being a sleeper. He played in just 36 games last year, hit 272 with seven home runs and 19 RBIs and stole five base, bases. So a really good start last year for Kipnis. Uh, I would look for big things out of him. He might not be well known to most of your competing fantasy baseball managers. Another guy we, we really like, Jose Altuve, the pocket rocket from Houston. He's five foot seven with blazing speed, hit 389 in the minors last year, uh, got called up to the majors, uh, had 221 at bats. He had a 276 average and seven stolen bases. We really like him because Houston's going to struggle to score this year, so he's probably going to get a lot of chances to steal bases. Uh, Alexi Casilla of the Twins is another guy. He's been around a few years. Uh, first chance last year that he got to start on a full-time basis, and he hit 260 with 15 stolen bases and only 323 at-bats. He's going to be pushed by Luke Hughes, who's the Australian player that the Twins have at second base, but we think he could steal 25 bases next year. Uh, another guy we like, Daniel Murphy of the Mets. Uh, this guy hit 320. He's not going to do a lot for you in terms of home runs and stolen bases, but with the fences moved in at City Field, he could be a 10, 12 home run guy and another 300 hitter. Always good to have someone who can help your batting average at second base. And another guy we like here is uh, Johnny Giovatella of the Kansas City Royals. He hit 338 in the minors last year. He really scorched it in the minors in June and July, hit 391, and then got the call to the bigs. He hit uh, 247, so he struggled a little bit in uh, August and September in his call-up with the Royals, but he's a 270, 10 home run guy next year and probably one that won't be well-known in your league. Okay, great job there. Second base, great to see we have uh, Daniel Murphy for the Mets on. That gives me a little hope for the Mets at least this year. Hey, guys, before I um, – we're running, almost running out of town quickly. Uh, final four, John, for the uh, – uh, lingerie football league and stuff like that. Less than 30 seconds to go. You got Philly versus Tampa, LA versus Vegas. Who's going to be the Super Bowl picks? 
you know, I think in, in the lingerie bowl next weekend, I, I, my personal feeling is that everyone is going to be watching Philadelphia and Vegas. Uh, but they've been the two best teams statistically all season, so I think you're going to see them in the lingerie bowl. And if I can tease ahead to next week, we uh, we will be closing the hottest wife NFL vote. So get your votes in for uh, Julie Dornboss, and we're going to be starting up an LSL related vote next week. So you're going to wow. be looking forward to that, and we'll have uh, all that ready to go for Spador on Sports next uh, next weekend. And, of course, um, you'll have um, two new faces up on the website at SpadoraOnSports.com. They're the uh, Duga heads of um, Bob and, uh, and and John Bentz here. Guys, all the best, of course, the segment of uh, of uh, the fantasy sports brought to you by the good friends of uh, WebFriends.com. And think about Valentine's Day. Think about meeting a friend on WebFriends and, uh, um, and having everything that you ever desired or wanted. Okay, guys, have a great weekend. Yep, Thank thanks, you. Pete. You bet. You're with Sports. We'll be right back.